Welcome to our W.E. Obishan At Home podcast series with John Haley. I'm joined today by Keith Woodbury, our paint specialist from our Beverly location. Keith, welcome to At Home, sponsored by Obishan Hardware. Thanks, John. Glad to be back here again. Well, it's always great to have you around, Keith, because you're just a wealth of knowledge regarding everything paint and stain. Our last discussion, Keith, we spent time talking about all the prep and maintenance procedures and chemicals offered by Benjamin Moore to help prepare deck and exterior surfaces for paint or stain applications. Our discussion today, Keith, will have to do with Arbor Coat stains. Now, Arbor Coat is the Benjamin Moore's product for both alkyd and waterborne exterior stain products. Keith, would you please take a moment to discuss the differences between waterborne stain and alkyd stains? Sure, John. When a customer comes up and they want to know their options, we let them know that we can go up until the solid. We can go with either a waterborne or an alkyd stain. Uh, Some of the differences are your alkyd stain is going to penetrate a little bit deeper. Uh, Your color is going to be a little bit deeper on that wood also. Whereas your waterborne, it's going to dry a lot quicker. You're going to get back onto it a little bit quicker, and it's going to be still a little bit lighter. For years, the stains were all oils, all deep penetration, which required thinners, thinner rags, all the byproducts involved with an oil product, which were hazardous sometimes. So with our new modern waterborne Arbor Coat stains, we have some great bonds, some great high, great representation of color. Our oils are still there for our soft woods. Let's take a moment, Keith, to talk about two different types of woods, hardwood and softwood. And where would you recommend waterborne and alkyds accordingly? When the customer comes in and they tell us what kind of wood they have, and it's a soft wood, such as your PT or your cedar or your fir, we're going to advise them to go with the alkyd. When they come in and they tell us that they have something like mahogany or IP, a little bit more exotic hard wood, we're going to suggest that they go to the waterborne. That's going to have a much better adhesion to the wood. There's also a little bit of a difference in the representation of both oil and latex. Let us walk through the various type of presentations the stains are offered in and how the waterborne and the alkyd stains represent slightly different. So in our waterborne line, we'll have our semi-transparent, translucent, semi-solid, a solid, and we also have an exterior solid flat. In our alkyd line, we have a translucent, a semi-solid, and a semi-transparent. Each one of these are designed for a certain type of wood. But we do know that the alkyd stains, because of their penetration into softwoods, sometimes leave a little bit of a blotchy representation. This is natural to the oil stains penetration into that softer wood, where those latex stains are sitting more or less on the surface, relying on technology for the bond and the adhesion, but giving us uniform, consistent representation, whether it be wood exposure or a solid color. So let's take a moment, Keith, and we'll start off with our waterborne line. Now, Keith, we have a wide variety in the waterborne, transparent, semi-transparent. Let's walk through each one of those and see what would be the best recommendation for their application so our listening audience can make a better determination for themselves about what they may want to consider for their outside deck. Before we get into that discussion, I do want to advise all of our listeners and our customers, please feel free to stop in any local Obershawn hardware store to talk about the details required for your specific project. Our educated and prepared specialists are here to advise you the proper way for you to have great results and long-term life. So, Keith, let's start off with the Waterborne Arbor Coat line. Take us for a little walk through the different finishes. For the Waterborne line, we have all the different finishes, as you have already pointed out, from translucent, semi-transparent, semi-solid, solid, solid, both in the low sheen, which is more of a matte finish, and then the ultra flat. And so where would we be putting these various finishes on? Let's start off with the lighter of the finishes. Where would you recommend that we apply a Waterborne transparent stain. A new deck would be perfect for the waterborne. You want to show that grain, you want to show that brand new wood. It's good on the mahogany and the IP decks because like you said, it's going to grip onto there. You're going to get a nice finish, a nice sheen on that, and it's not going to be too blotchy. One of the things that we like to discuss is about where the deck is located. If the deck is right out of the back of the house and it's in the grade, 
with grass growing around it, or are we off the ground slightly? Is the deck coming off a first floor or a second floor? These will all have determinations about recommendations. Do we have airflow flowing around all the planks in the decking? So for instance, let's take that deck that's in the grade. This is where I'd be recommending our transparents or semi-transparents. We're not leaving a film coating on the surface. We're leaving colored pigmentation. We want to see that grain, that wood, so beautiful, but we're accentuating it. So we'd have longer life in the situation because we'd be preventing the peel or the breakaway. We'd have more of a natural breakdown of the colorants on the surface, which would make for easier repair work and easier maintenance. And this would be recommended where we're close to the grade. So we have water issues, moisture, dew that once again wants to find its way through wood fiber directly to the sun. If we had a solid coating on a deck that was in the grade with moisture trying to find its way to the sun, this would be a challenge for a solid film coating to actually have longer life. So from my perspective, the semi-transparents and transparents would be closer to the grade for easier maintenance and long-term life. But Keith, let's walk up that line a little bit to our translucents. Tell me about the translucent line. The translucent line is a big seller with us. Mostly we go with the oil. Um, with the Elkid, people have a lot of PT decks, um, a lot of fur, a lot of pine, and they're going with our 326 line. It comes in seven different colors, so they do have a little bit of an option there, and it's going to show the most grain and to beautify that deck. I personally love the translucent because you almost have an encapsulated colorant inside of a film coating, which really gives an enhancement or a richness to the wood. So the translucent line, for me, I would agree with you about the Alkyd component being a perfect choice for a PT deck or a fir or cedar. One of the things about the translucent oil, though, when they dry, they tend to be slightly blotchy. But yet the protection is in full force. That's just to do with the grain of the wood. It's not the stain. Stains get absorbed into grain differently based upon the pericity of the wood. So this is part of that natural, inconsistent beauty that we'd experience on a deck. Now, could we get a little bit more unified or uniform finish with the Alkyd translucents? We could. This is a tricky dance with applying wet on wet coatings, and I'd recommend to our listening audience and to our customers to stop into your local Obershawn hardware store to get the right information about applying wet on wet coatings with translucents for your best results. Well, Keith, we've had an opportunity to review our transparent, semi transparent, and translucent stains in both waterborne and alkyd. Now, Orbicoat does manufacture a semi-solid in both latex and alkyd. Would you like to take a moment, Keith, and explain the benefits of a semi-solid from our Arborcoat line? We have both the waterborne and the alkyd, and when people come in, they're not really sure what that means versus the semi-transparent. So what we do at Beverly Store, and I'm sure we do it at a bunch of our other Aubuchon stores, is we have wooden samples where I've drawn down a lot of the different colors that are offered, we show them the semi-transparent, the semi-solid. We show them that you can still see some grain in a semi-solid, but you're going to have a little bit more opaque. We also use the fan deck here, and we show them you can do the same color, but it is going to differ a little bit. They seem to enjoy that once they can physically see and touch what they're going to be putting on their deck. That consumer experience, when they walk into a store and they can actually put something in their hands, it becomes tangible. When I was in the Tewksbury location, I had more samples of all of our paint products and stains because I found it important for our customers when they came into the store to actually put their hands on the product, see what it was, not looking from a digitally produced brochure. So our fan dexes are actually wood chipped, aren't they? Yes, they are. They actually changed this a few years back to use actual wood with the actual stain on it, a little bit better representation. And as we all know, each stain is going to take different to a different wood. So we also have little sample jaws in the semi-transparent, solid, and semi-solid that they can try out first. Now, Keith, take a moment to explain that. What would be the difference in representation from a waterborne stain and an alkyd stain? What kind of demonstration do you show the customer what the differences would be? Well, we can take the waterborne stain and we can put it onto their wood. Sometimes they even bring, bring in a sample and they can see that it's going to be a little bit lighter. It's not going to penetrate as much and it's going to show the color closest to our fan deck. And the alkyd would tend to penetrate a little bit more, perhaps making that color seem a little bit more deeper. 
Yes, sir. All right, so we have some wonderful tools that are tangible for our customers when they come into the store between samples that you've manufactured, which many of our locations have done, as well as our new and improved Arbor Coat Fan Deck produced by Benjamin Moore that actually has wooden chips. But what are the three finishes that are being demonstrated in that Fan Deck? Oh, the three finishes are on your top here, it's going to be a semi-transparent. On your second level, it's going to be a semi-solid. And all the way down the bottom, it's going to be the solid. All three of these are a representation of the same color, just different opacity. So not only do our customers and our listening audience have the opportunity to go into a local Aubuchon hardware store and talk to a paint professional, we also have the tools to allow them to bring these fan decks home so they can see what is the right color for them. Now, Keith, we've talked about the semi-solids. We've talked about translucence and transparents and semi-transparents. Solid coatings. Now, the paint industry had a big change. You and I, in our younger years, when we were staining and painting homes, we had a 100% alkyd solid stain. The VOC laws have mandated that that no longer exists. So we'll only get an alkyd stain as deep as a semi-solid. So in Benjamin Moore's line, we have two different types of solid arbor coat. We have an arbor coat with a low luster, and we also have an arbor coat flat. Would you kindly take a few moments to tell us the pros of each product and where they should be applied? When the customer comes in, the first thing we're going to ask them when they're asking for a stain is, what is this going to go on to? Because if it is going on to a deck, then we're only going to go with the low sheen, which is a matte finish, solid. We're not going to go with the ultra flat. That's not applicable for a horizontal surface. The horizontal surface with traction we have a lot of colorant exposed in that stain. So we know that flat, which is designed strictly for a vertical siding or fencing, would never have the durability to hold up to foot traffic or grease from grills or just life in general. Conversely, our Arbor Coat Low Luster matte finish, as you described it, has the durability features to be washed and maintained and take everyday life. When we're recommending applying a solid stain to a customer for the deck, we ask a few questions about how active is their family, how much action and traffic will be on that deck. And most of the times we like to encourage that we apply two coats to give us longer life and more durability. Now, do you find that to be the case in most of your customers and how you interact with them? 100%. These days, people are using their decks, like you said, with their grills. They have pets running across it. A lot of people are even shoveling their decks. And we do live in New England, so it's going to take a beating with the sun the weather we have, the snow. So we want you to put two coats. It's going to give you the best protection, and it's really going to bring out the truest color. When we start talking about a solid stain on a horizontal surface, we have to go back to our original conversation in our last meeting about truly making sure that surface is prepared, clean, dry, and dull to make sure that the initial coating we put on there bites that surface provides the bond that we're looking for, for longer life and better wear. The second coat actually gives us the millage that we're looking for. Just like with interior paints, there's a certain amount of required film coating to a dried surface in order to actually perform the featured benefits of the paint product. So on a deck surface with high traffic, chairs, grills, everyday life, one coat may not be enough. It may look beautiful after one coat, but the second coat gives you that additional confidence that you can live on that deck. Enjoy it. One thing we do want to recommend, though, is that, well, because we are in New England, that you clearly just mentioned, weather has its input on everything. So, maintenance. It's a good idea to keep our eyes open. Even if we've done all the work, we've prepared our surfaces, we applied our coatings, but it's nice to be cognizant of what's going on daily. If we see some Areas that are beginning to look suspect, maybe a little wear and tear, maybe a little blister. This is all natural in New England. Our weather, we can't control that. But we can control how we maintain our surfaces. That means being aware of it. If we see something start to blister or peel, do you recommend that your customers wait until the deck fails, Keith? Or do you encourage them to stay on top of it? When they see little issues here and there as they arise, which they will, to address it right then and there. I like to have people... Take a look at this and realize that the longer you let the problem go, the more difficult it is going to be to fix it in the long run. So if you start to see some failure, let's get on top of that. Let's sand those areas down. Let's spot prime them. Let's put on another thin coat. Let's protect our deck. I like what you just said, another thin coat. 
we know that thin code applications have a better opportunity to bond to one another. So outside services, horizontal, we know that naughty word maintenance is part of the process. So encouraging our customers to be aware of their surroundings, aware of their deck surface, because let's remember, in our discussion with our customers, it's not just the investment of the stain that they're purchasing, it's the investment of their time and their effort. And if you have to go back out to restain your deck every year or every other year, because we've cut a corner, we haven't prepared ourselves for longer term success, then we look at the value of the labor. So each phase of the work that we involve ourselves with, with an exterior surface for a deck or siding, we have to expect the return in its longevity. And we'll get out of it what we put into it. So this is a discussion that sometimes we have to find a way to open the discussion with the customers to understand that maintenance is part of this whole process. Absolutely. I like to get involved with the project, ask as many questions as I can. When they walk out that door, I want to make sure that I've given them the right product. I've also told them the correct maintenance to do with this. Um, they don't have to come back and see me every year for a stain, but they should be coming back for their cleaners and their products like that. You know, in all the years back when we, you and I were young and were out there swinging the brush on the houses, cans had labels on that said seven and ten year warranties. What did that mean on a deck? The reality is we're looking here in New England of anywhere from 14 to 18 months, 24 months. At that point in time, we are anticipating that we're going to have a significant amount of work to do in a horizontal situation deck surfaces itself in particular, and also all the surrounding areas around this type of surface will all play a role in the longevity of that surface. If you have a deck that's surrounded by pine trees, you have all that pollen continually falling on your surface, so we have to stay on top of the cleaning. So it's not just necessarily having the sand and stain, it means keeping our surfaces clean so we get better, longer life out of them. But that's part of the reality of our discussion with our customers and to our listeners. You'll get out of it what you put into it. So the effort to prepare that surface, clean, dry, and dull. The proper conditions, dry weather prior, application, dry weather afterwards. Give ourselves an opportunity to have success and have a better experience doing this kind of work. Because working on decks, Keith, as we well know, is pretty arduous, It's pretty laborious, isn't it? They're very difficult. They take some time. They take a lot of patience. And you do really have to take a look at what the procedures are to get that beautiful deck. Well, we have another product on the outside, which is a great open discussion. So in our Arbor Coat line, we do have an exterior oil primer. Now, we know that the technology in our Arbor Coat stains in particular is superior. Great adhesion, great bond, great solid color, Gen X colorant systems providing the colorant platform for these products. But they do manufacture an Alkyd primer. Now, Keith, recommend uh, to our listening audience where you would find that Alkyd primer to be appropriate to be used. Well, when you have the deck that's failing, that you're having the peeling or some of the scrape off, you're having some of the deck exposed and the rest of it is a film coating. We don't want to just go right over that all the time. We want to seal that in. So we want to have them do the right prep with the sanding. And then we want to spot prime or fully prime, depending on the nature of the deck. If they're going to the solid, I'm of the old school, John. I like that oil prime. You wrap that deck and then go on top with your two coats of solid stain. And I think that's where you're going to get the longest life out of it. I would tend to be in that same uh, dugout with you. I do like the idea, especially on a deck that's been in existence. It's been there for a few years. It's had some life to it. Something that's been slightly compromised. If it was brand new wood and we had pressure-treated water repellents that are in there, maybe this primer would not be appropriate too early in that life of the wood. But as old as it gets, oxidation has caused it to break apart, and it's become porous. So I find that some ways this would be the proper application for this oil primer. You'll be able to fill in all your check cracks or openings in the deck. So this gives you another opportunity for better bond inside the challenging areas of a horizontal surface. So again, on a vertical surface on the side of a barn or a house where we've scraped down and prepared that surface and we have raw wood all day long, would I be confident working with an oil primer to get deeper penetration, better, longer life on that surface because the oils, as we both know, 
they oxidize. And through oxidation means they're still expanding and contracting. So an oil primer on an outside surface gives us a little bit more flexibility that we're looking for. Our Arbor Coat coating on top of there will certainly have the flexibility because of its waterborne nature. So I'm a proponent with you, Keith. I like the idea of using oil primer on a vertical raw wood and on a horizontal deck, especially if it's been seasoned or weathered or challenged. Keith, we've had a great opportunity to review the majority of our waterborne and alkyd Arbor Coat stains manufactured by Benjamin Moore, all readily available at your local Obishan hardware store. Keith, there is one more product on our shelves that we have not discussed today, because it's not manufactured by Benjamin Moore, but it is pretty popular worldwide, called Thompson's Water Seal. Do you sell a lot of Thompson's in your Beverly location, Keith? We absolutely do. Um, We have a few different brands of Thompson's that everybody seems to know, because like you said, it's been around for an awful long time. Um, I do know that Benjamin Moore has tried to combat that with their own waterproofer, which we've started to pick up a little bit of steam with also. One thing about Thompson's Water Seal, ladies and gentlemen, take a look at that packaging, that picture on the label, that beaded water on that nice piece of clean wood. That is the best marketing picture ever taken. Thompson's Water Seal, in many regards, is a sacrificial coating. Paraffin wax is one of its main ingredients. So it's not designed for long life or long-term protection like an Arbor Coat coating. So price point, easily available, can be applied with a bug sprayer, but it lacks the long-term protection offered by Benjamin Moore's Arbor Coats. We just want to make sure we clarify that product line and what it's actually used for. If you had a fence along your, your horse's stable, putting Thompson's water seal through a bug sprayer might be your quickest way to, to address that. But overall, we certainly want to promote the durability and the quality and longevity of our Arbor Coat products. Now, Keith, in order to apply all these wonderful stains, we need some tools. And I know your location in Beverly, you have one of the most wonderful selection of both brushes, rollers, and tools and accessories. Would you kindly take a moment and share with us what your recommendations would be regarding brushes for Arbor Coat? rollers, and some application techniques. Sure, John. We have about 16 feet of brushes and applicators for this. Booster does a very good job with this, with their stainers um, in the 4 and the 5 inches. Uh, They're nice and thick. They're going to get in between the boards. They're going to hold the stain. They're going to have a nice release on them and to give you a great look. One thing that our listeners and our customers may not be aware of, there is a difference between a stain brush and a paintbrush. Most of our paintbrushes have filaments, polyester, or nylon, where the stain bristles are more natural and also split at the end, like a split hair. That wider bristle, that split end, actually affords the ability to hold more material. So you're not leaving a trail from the pot to the surface. So I know that you have a wonderful selection, and what's really wonderful about those Worcester brushes in particular, the wider ones, the one inch thick, they actually have a a screw-in adapter at the top so you can put in a regular pole so you can apply these stains or back brush them from a standing position, which is another wonderful feature, especially if you have a large deck and you're crawling around to try and do it on your knees. This is a less arduous way to do it and a little bit more uniform in the long run. But I'm glad we're talking about brushes. Answer this question. Why is it important for us to back brush stain into a surface? Well, you want to back brush the stain into the surface because you want to push that into the grain of the wood. You want that to penetrate. We've been talking about this with our Abacote line all day long. You can roll or you can spray it on, but it's going to sit on the surface. And by sitting on the surface, you're not going to get that tenacious adhesion. So you definitely want to back brush if you do either one of those methods. Not to mention, your decks have grooves. The brush is going to push it into those grooves, whereas your spray or your roll is not going to. Well, Keith, that wide variety of brushes that you just mentioned that our audience and our customers have available to them will really make a big difference in how the stains are applied and their end results. One of the things we like to recommend to our customers is how they apply stain. By doing a 3 by 3 or a 4 by section at a time, we could tend to create a lap mark. Our recommendations to our customers have been to work from the house two or three planks in their entire length at a time. This way we keep a wet edge 
from left to right. We prevent the opportunity for an overlap. We work within the space that we're comfortable with. We're not overextending ourselves, so our performance and the ultimate performance of the product is what will meet our expectations. So, when it comes down to applying the stains, slow it down a notch. Be thorough about it. Use enough stain. Back brush it. Keep a wet edge. Do what you're capable of doing. Don't overextend yourself. And the results and the beauty, well, in the long run, that's what you'll be experiencing. Keith, I want to thank you for being with us here at home today, sponsored by Obershawn Hardware. Our discussion regarding Arbor Coat exterior stains, both waterborne and Alcott, has been extremely informative. I want to thank you for bringing all of your expertise to us today to discuss proper application, location, the quality of the products, procedures, and everything else in between. I encourage our listening audience to please stop into our local Obishan Hardware Store in Beverly or Ipswich for great advice on how to address your deck or your exterior painting project. Keith, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, John. I really appreciate it being here. We look forward to all of you coming on in. For more information, please visit hardwarestore.com. Thanks for listening to At Home with John Haley.